Hello, beautiful souls. I'm your host, Janet Tarantino, and I want to express my deepest gratitude for joining me here at Exploring Everything Spiritual. On this channel, we'll dive deep into the mystical and the profound. I'll be sitting down with remarkable guests who have undergone life-altering spiritual moments when the veil between worlds thins and the ordinary becomes extraordinary. But that's not all. I'll also be sharing captivating spiritual narratives, stories that touch the very essence of our souls. If you've had a transformative experience or possess an uplifting spiritual story to tell, I invite you to connect with me through my website, JanetTarantino.com. There you will discover a special tab called Share Your Spiritual Story. Let's weave our collective wisdom and illuminate the path for others. This story is provided by Connie. At the time, Connie, 42 years old, was by her brother-in-law, Keith's bedside, with his wife, Eileen, when they witnessed Keith's final transition. Connie explains her extraordinary experience like this. Keith, the father of two children, was 44 years old. After the removal of a brain tumor five years previously, the growth returned with a vengeance. This time, the brain tumor was proving to be fatal. When Keith declined, we placed him in hospice care. As his final time neared, a number of us remained with him by his side. On the day of his transition, his wife, Eileen, his mother, his sister-in-law, his mother-in-law, and I were in the room reminiscing. We were sipping on a favorite wine in celebration of Keith's life. We talked about our funny and memorable moments with Keith that we cherished so much. From the moment the first brain tumor's diagnosis had occurred, Keith and Eileen had chosen the rose as their symbol of hope. They often described themselves as soulmates because their love was so deep, and from the moment they met, they had an extraordinary sense that they'd known each other forever. Miraculously, when the hospice nurse arrived on duty that day, our minds were blown and on high alert when she gave us a radiant smile and introduced herself as Rose. That's when we knew God was communicating to us that Keith was in the best of care, his care, and would probably be leaving that day. Later that evening, we asked Rose if she knew how long Keith had left. Rose explained she could not say exactly, except it would be soon after his breathing changes. She told us to watch his chest. When he quits breathing using his lungs, we'll see him breathing using his stomach. That's when the moment is near. Shortly after Rose's explanation, around 11 p.m., Eileen noticed Keith's coloring was changing slightly. She and I, who had been sitting next to his bed, stood to be near him. Rose was the closest, and I was somewhat off to her side, but behind her. We notified Rose about the change. Rose came to the bed and pulled Keith's sheets back to check his abdomen to see if he was still breathing or if he had already died, but he hadn't died. He was now using his stomach to, to live as she said he would. Swiftly after this, Keith's breathing stopped entirely, and we saw the most incredible thing. We saw a little ball under the skin of his abdomen. We could see it. The ball started to move. We could even see the spherical shape traveling under the skin up his body. We could see it the entire way up his torso until suddenly his upper body lift, lifted up off the bed in a supernatural way. And we heard a forceful appellation of breath that sounded like a loud pop. Just at that sound came out of his mouth, Keith looked toward his wife, Eileen. The energy leaving Keith's body exited with such force, it knocked Eileen backward into me, but I was able to catch and stabilize her before she might fall. Our eyes were stunned when afterward we saw Keith's soul floating above his body. We had no doubt it was his soul, and it looked like a puff of wispy smoke. At that moment, a sense of calm overtook the room, 
that we all could feel. He continued to hover as if he was making sure we all were okay before he disappeared. Again, there is no doubt in our mind that what we saw was indeed Keith's spirit and that he continues to live in heaven and around us. Everyone in the room experienced and witnessed Keith's departure, which has opened the awareness of all involved. This mind-blowing gift of a shared death experience has given them much comfort in knowing he still lives an eternal life. Remember, dear listener, to subscribe and like, as life is a tapestry of moments, some mundane, others magical, and each click, each like, each subscribe is more than a digital gesture. It's a testament to our shared humanity, our yearning for connection beyond the boundaries of time and space. Thank you for being here. Bye.